Okay, good, good afternoon everyone. My name is Dr. Daniel Kelly and today for our alumni conversation I'm going to be interviewing Matthew Schulte from the class of 2010. Uh, Matthew Schulte is currently the Senior Manager for Special Events and Promotions for the Kansas City Royals. Matthew, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Good to be here. All right, great. Um, um, unfortunately, earlier we had a bit of technical difficulty, but we've been able to, you know, pre-record this interview today. And so I'm really excited to get a chance to, to pick the brand of one of our alums. And um, for Matt, whose current position is as a special manager of special events and promotions for the Kansas City Royals, um, I kind of wanted to talk about your experiences when you were a student here at NYU. Yeah, I, uh, boy, it's hard to believe that was 10 years ago now. Uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed my four-year undergrad experience at NYU, living uh, around Washington Square Park uh, and the residence halls there, and uh, really enjoyed the urban campus, the urban feel, the uh, professional mindset, the uh, international mindset of the NYU student. Uh, it was a really good four years. I learned a lot. I grew up a lot, um, as any person does uh, in their college experience, but um, doing in, it in New York and at NYU um, really expedited the process. So uh, really enjoyed the NYU experience. Okay, great, great. Um, as a student at NYU, I know that you were pretty active. You were an RA, you were a student admissions ambassador. You were also yeah. um, involved really heavily as the president of the Student Association for SPS. Um, Why did you stay so involved as a student? It, uh, it's just in my nature. Um, I was like that in high school and I continued it on in college. It was my way to stay engaged and involved um, and give back. Uh, I didn't know anyone when I moved uh, to NYU and so it was my way to get connected to the students. Um, a lot of my friends uh, were through these programs. Um, I, I enjoy being an admissions ambassador, giving campus tours, kind of telling my NYU story um, and it hit home, especially being from Kansas City to go to New York um, and, and that I was doing well. So that was uh, nice to hear for both parents and students. So I enjoyed uh, giving that experience. It also helped with my uh, public speaking skills as well. Um, and then being an RA, I did that my senior year at uh, Third North uh, Residence Hall. And man, that's a lot of skill sets that I learned in that role that still translate today, uh, whether it's leadership, uh, conflict management, um, you know, even to, to the point of arts and crafts, um, but working with people, teamwork, communication, um, really that was a great experience uh, being a leader at a freshman dorm. Uh, so really enjoyed that. That was um, a lot of fun. And then, yeah, doing student government as well, uh, which was great to stay connected to the issues, uh, that were going on, um, not only at NYU, but in SPS at that time, uh, connected to the administration. Um, so really enjoyed that um, kind of leadership experience as well. So yeah, I mean, I think it's really important, uh, whatever, whatever group you're in, to be involved, to be engaged, uh, and to stay connected. All right, great, great. Um, I also saw that you were really involved with internships. You know, you had a couple yeah. with CNBC as well as SNY. Um, how were those experiences? Yeah, and that's, you know, one of the main reasons why I chose um, NYU and, and the sports management program was um, the internship mindset, the professional mindset, um, and the ability to have internships in New York, where all the major companies are based. So for me, it was really important to get a diverse internship experience, kind of figure out what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, so I was able to have uh, several internships uh, while living in New York. Uh, one at uh, SNY, uh, the Mets uh, TV broadcast, um, and that was a good experience. I, I had several internships on the television side. I uh, really was kind of interested on, on the behind the camera side. Um, so I had an internship at uh, CNBC, which is a, a non-sports uh, channel, but a really good insight there uh, being in their news desk. Um, really, that's the heartbeat of a, a news station. So that was an insightful experience. Um, and then also an internship at MLB Network, uh, my, kind of my first dabble into baseball. Um, and then also an internship at SME Branding, uh, which is an advertising agency. Um, and really 
that was a valuable experience to get that branding experience uh, as well, learning how to build a brand, which is still um, kind of a phrase I use today of, uh, in the marketing department. So yeah, those are all very valuable experiences, really a chance for me to build up my resume as well. Um, so I was really armed and ready uh, when I hit graduation. All right, great, great. Um, my next question has to do with uh, your favorite class or the class that you felt like really added value as you were pursuing your career goals. Yeah, I mean, not only did I enjoy all the sports management classes, but um, also just the NYU um, classes as well. When you get into the arts and culture, um, kind of your non-major classes, um, especially your first couple of years, I found those very valuable, really make you a well-rounded person. Um, I mean, I know when you get into your specific program, that's you want to dive deep into that. But I, I found uh, those other courses within NYU very valuable. Um, but sports management wise, I mean, really, the four years was great. Uh, what sticks out to me was I did a, a two week or three week um, study abroad with the sports management program. Uh, we went to Prague. It was a combination of undergrad and grad students. And we did a sports tourism course. Um, which I thought was really insightful. So we spent most of our time in Prague. We also uh, went to Germany and Munich, um, really focused around the Olympics. Um, at that point, um, Prague was uh, a bidder for an Olympic Games. So we analyzed that bid. And then we also uh, visited Munich uh, and that old Olympic site. So really kind of studied the impact that the Olympics have on the city and the legacy that they live. So that was obviously really insightful to be in those cities and study that. Um, so really enjoyed that experience. All right, great, great. Um, I, I kind of want to switch gears a bit and kind of yeah. focus more at this time on your current career. Um, since graduation, you have done a lot of great things, you know, fantastic career opportunities with the Kansas City Royals organization, starting out in inside sales, moving to marketing, and now your current role as a senior manager. Um, how would you describe your progression with the Royals? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I feel very lucky and fortunate. Um, I grew up in Kansas City, so the Royals are my hometown team. Um, and I wanted to work for the Royals someday. That was my goal. And very lucky and fortunate that it came really right after college. Um, I applied for an inside sales job, um, which is uh, ticket sales, uh, selling group tickets and season tickets. Uh, was able to land an interview and uh, move back to Kansas City and uh, did that job for about a year and a half. Uh, the Royals were uh, you know, a struggling team at that time, but we had the uh, All-Star game coming up. So we kind of used that uh, during our sales pitch. But for me, it was really good to learn how to sell. I didn't necessarily want to do sales long-term, but it was good to get that base because even what I do now in marketing is selling. It's just a different type of selling than say being on the phones all day long, uh, cold calling people. So. Um, I was good to get that base of a sales experience um, and then, you know, kind of being at the right place at the right time, a somewhat entry level job within the marketing team at the Royals uh, opened up. I applied for that as an internal candidate and landed that. So I was the marketing coordinator uh, for about six years. So I was in that role for a long time. Um, and then two years ago was promoted within the marketing department to the role I'm in now, uh, being senior manager of special events and promotions. So I've been at the Royals for 10 years now, um, about a year and a half in ticket sales. And then most of my roles have been within the marketing uh, team here at the Royals. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, it's all progressed really well. I mean, working hard and having a good reputation is important. Um, and also being at the right place at the right time is, is key. But uh, I, I've seen the roller coaster at the Royals. Um, we kind of got better each year I was there. I uh, mentioned the All-Star game. We had that in 2012. And then 2014, uh, we went to the World Series uh, as the first time we were in the postseason in 30 years. So the city was going crazy. Uh, we didn't expect to be in the World Series. We got there. We got to game seven of the World Series. Uh, didn't make it. And then 2015 kind of felt like the redemption tour. Uh, and they were on a mission from day one. And uh, it was impressive to see they made it to the World Series uh, and uh, won the World Series in, in 2015 and what a magical run that was. So, um, and then from then, uh, we're trying to each year get there, but uh, uh, working on, on building up a team again uh, to be competitive. So 
uh, it's been a roller coaster, but uh, you know, in the marketing side, you don't really tout wins and losses. You, you promote the experience of being there. Uh, we're an entertainment property ultimately. So um, that's kind of been our role. We, you try not to get bogged down in the wins and losses and focus on that. You focus on, uh, you know, the experience of being at the ballpark and, and enjoying Royals baseball. All right, great, great. I want to take a, a bit of a deep dive into your role on, on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis on the marketing side. Um, we have started to invest heavily into analytics and, you know, increasing the analytics offerings for our students. Um, the role of analytics in your job function, is it increasing? Is it becoming an essential activity? Yes, uh, very much so. Um, but that's probably our biggest area of want, of need, um, that we want to improve on. Um, there is an analytics person on the business side uh, that kind of services several different departments. Um, so um, we, are, we utilize that person, but we, we want more. Uh, we want more analytics, more data, more info about our customers um, to really help us make our decisions. You know, we have uh, a good history and a good idea, but um, uh, it would definitely be beneficial to uh, learn more and have um, data to back up our decisions rather than just our um, intuition or our feeling or our gut or our knowledge of the experience. So that's something that we're working on, but you, you definitely see it more prevalent on the business side of this industry now. Um, and every department kind of wants one, you know, ticket sales uh, wants one, sponsorship wants one, uh, marketing wants one. So uh, we utilize a third party company as well to help us. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're a student, um, that is definitely a valuable area to go in um, and to have that experience and knowledge of doing analytics, because um, like I said, there's just going to be more of it as we move forward. All right, great, great. At this time, I have a couple of questions from students that I reached out to earlier when I explained to them that I was going to be interviewing you. Um, we have a lot of interest in your background, especially the fact that you took a lot of internships in media and then you transitioned over to sales for about a year and a half and then yeah. into your marketing role. So um, you mentioned it a bit earlier when it came to the, the sales, how in your line of work, you'll be selling something, whether it's the ticket sales or you're selling the marketing side for the team. Um, right. Were there any hard luck lessons you learned from the sales side that have benefited you so far in your career? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, patience mm -hmm. um, and getting down. You get a lot of no's um, in sales. Um, and that's, that's the case for any sales job, really. Um, but it's that one yes every day, you hope every day, um, that keeps you from coming back. Um, so not taking the no's personal um, is key. Um, so really, I mean, the mental side of sales is, you know, a huge part of it. Um, and, and, you know, I remember days in sales where I had, you know, two or three yeses and four yeses and, and you feel really good and you want to keep going and, and that drives you forward. Um, but really the, the key to the sales part for me was listening to the customer, uh, first of all, and trying to cater their wants and needs um, to them and making it work. So if they have, um, you know, difficulties with, with figuring out why they want to, you know, have group sales with the Royals, getting over those humps for them and telling them here are the benefits um, to buying group tickets or season tickets um, and kind of overcoming their obstacles. So listening to them and then solving their problems um, was key to me. Um, but also the camaraderie of the sales staff was important as well because we were all kind of going through it together. You all sit together. Um, so we were trying to have good rapport with everybody and, and talk to each other and get along and share ideas. Um, so continued learning was a big key going through the sales process as well. Um, but uh, yeah, the more mental part, um, but you also work off a commission. So there's that value as well of, um, you know, you make more money, the, the better you do. So um, there's that motivation as well. Okay, great, great. Um, for an aspiring uh, sports manager in the future, looking to follow your similar roadmap, um, I'm guessing you would do sales again because it seems to have been a value add, even though there were times it was tough, it seems to have provided character moments where you built on it to be able to do your job now? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. I would not shy away from a sales job or role. Uh, 
one thing of advice though I would mention is um, you don't wanna use that as a stepping stone to get somewhere else or at least visually show it uh, to your manager. I've heard our ticket salespeople um, talk about all the time that you know, um, salespeople that, that just take a sales job to then get out of a sales job. And yeah. so you don't want that to be the case. Um, you know, I embraced the sales role. I didn't have any sales experience beforehand. I went all in, I learned about it. Um, I enjoyed it. I mean, I kind of knew it wasn't what I wanted to do long-term, but um, I would never suggest doing a sales role um, and having your hands crossed, you know, from day one and not wanting to do it because you're just not going to go anywhere. You're going to not enjoy it. You're going to get stuck. You're not going to do well. So don't take a sales job just to take one. Um, and then think day one, I'm getting out of here. It's, it's, it's taking it, embracing it, enjoying it. And then if you learn that that's not for you, um, then still learning those skills and, and applying them elsewhere. Okay. Um, so currently the job market for sports is, is bit um, in transition as we're dealing with COVID-19. Um, what kind of advice would you give um, a graduating senior or a graduate student that is looking to enter into the sport market, but you know, doesn't really, right now there's no games. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it without a doubt, especially when all the leagues are shut down. Uh, I mean, we're pretty much at a hiring freeze and uh, the league is and, and most of the teams are. So um, it's not easy. I, I would challenge you to stay relevant um, though in some regard, whether it's, uh, volunteering um, or, you know, listening to courses like this, talking to alumni, um, you know, if, if there's chances to take internships, I would still do so. Uh, you know, if it's a paid internship, that's still a good experience. Um, I've had several interns at the Royals that have already graduated and they take an internship at the Royals. Um, that's the case for a lot of them. So don't um, feel shy about taking internships post-graduation. Um, that's still a great way to learn and be in the industry. Um, you know, ticket sales is, is more uh, of a hiring area as well. Um, but also use this as a chance to hone up your resume and your interview skills. Um, and I preach this all the time because you often forget about those two elements, but that really are the two main elements of getting a job. Um, is having a good resume, um, clean, crisp, concise. Um, so make sure that you know your resume looks good. And then interviewing, whether it's practice interviewing, doing mock interviews, getting prepped, um, that's another key component of the job process in terms of getting that job. So uh, making sure you have a good resume and um, you interview well, those are still two key components. Um, and especially now, probably do it on video because probably a lot of interviews will be remote. So being comfortable with that experience as well. So um, I would use this chance to um, read more articles, um, freshen up your knowledge and experience um, if you can't land that job. All right, great, great. Um, my, my next question has to do with, um, with planning out a career trajectory. So what are your next steps as far as your career? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question, especially nowadays where it's, you know, day to day. If you ask me what's going on next week, I don't know. Um, no, I am, you know, I'm very happy at the Royals. Um, you know, I've hit that 10 year mark, um, had three different roles here. Um, you know, the Royals are the hometown team. Very happy working in baseball. I love uh, the baseball mindset, the baseball family, uh, the people that work at the Royals. Um, so, you know, right now, this is what I'm focused on. Um, I know that the business side of sports is my passion, is my calling. Um, so I want to do anything that I can to stay on the business side of sports. Um, will I look at other opportunities down the road? For sure, 100%. Um, I think it's always good to be open and to be looking. Um, you know, I, I, there are some points, especially in the dog days of August, where I'm like, I'm ready to get out of baseball. You know, you're working a 10 game homestand and um, all that. And you're just, all right, I'm ready for football and working once, you know, uh, a week sort of thing. But, um, and I know they work more than once a week, but I'm just having less games. But so there are, there are times where, you know, the love hate relationship with baseball, the everyday nature of it. Um, I do enjoy the marketing side. I also, you know, do have experience on the television side as well. I can see getting into that. I also have passions in tennis and in golf. Um, you know, so there's, there's other areas as well as sport that I might want to dive myself into down the road, um, but we'll see. 
All right, great. Um, a few more questions, and then we'll let you go. But um, you mentioned earlier about your experience when you were selling for the Kansas City Royals, and um, you said that the camaraderie was something that was a support and a benefit for you. Um, did you feel like at, during your time at NYU, the group projects, the, the team-based building, those collaborative initiatives, they really help you in your experience? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, and I'm very much an independent person, but it's helpful. I mean, I found at the Royals that um, each, I mean, this is obvious, an obvious thing, but each person is different. Each person um, communicates differently. Um, each person um, has different mindsets, different ones. So. Um, you know, how I communicate with my boss is different than how I communicate with someone in sponsorship or someone in ballpark operations. Um, you know, there's just different personalities and ways. So, you know, teamwork is big. I am constantly working with different departments at the Royals. Um, you just can't live in silos. So for me, um, being able to work with different people um, is key to my job and making things happen and work at the Royals. Um, so those group-based um, ideas and projects back at college were very helpful. Um, listening to guest speakers um, during site visits, um, all of that, that learning all was very helpful to me. The educational component of NYU um, and the real life experiences I got at NYU um, still ring to me today. So I definitely value that experience. All right, this is the, my final question. It's about looking back. Um, they always say hindsight is 2020. If you had the chance to, to redo anything in your career, internships, uh, the inside sales positions, the, the, the marketing coordinator to your current role as a senior manager, would, it, would you do anything? Would you tweak it? Would you pivot and keep it the same? That's a good question. Um, I haven't thought much about that. Um, overall, probably no. Um, you know, I, I really enjoyed NYU. Um, you know, the one thing that NYU doesn't have are, are um, college football Saturdays, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I miss that because that's a big um, component around here um, are football Saturdays in college. And so you don't get that experience at NYU. You get a lot of other cool experiences, but, um, but that, but no, I mean, I'm very fortunate that my career direct trajectory has worked out um, the kind of the way I've wanted it to, and then also been at the Royals um, during a, a fun time and I uh, was able to get a World Series ring um, and, and have that experience, which is cool. So um, it's all worked out and um, it's a, just, you know, it's a windy road. You don't know how um, your career is going to work out. So for me, even for me trying to project, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, who knows, you know, who knows what's going to come up. Um, but there's been some things. So my role, I, I kind of handle two main elements um, in my role. One are special events that we do. Um, so events like student night, family fun day, Sunday, um, Star Wars night, uh, Negro Leagues day, or Hispanic Heritage day, uh, girls night. Um, so a lot of pregame events on the concourse. Um, thankfully, all those have gone uh, well and smoothly and we partner with community um, organizations to help raise awareness and funds. Um, sometimes those days um, are rainy or cold. Um, that's the element of working in an outdoor ballpark is you have to fight uh, the weather a lot of the time, uh, especially in the Midwest. Uh, but those all kind of have gone well over the course of the years. And then the other component I handle are gate giveaway items. So bobbleheads, t-shirts, jerseys, uh, those items that you get when you come in, um, often nicknamed the bobblehead guy. Uh, in the office because that's uh, really my specialty and I have some bobbleheads over here of, of some that I've done so um, and thankfully those have all gone well but that's probably the biggest fear I have every day um, not necessarily fear but what keeps me going um, is the attention to detail that we have to have with all the eyeballs on us uh, I mean I can't have a bobblehead have a sponsor incorrectly or the number on the back of the jersey is incorrect or their name is not spelled or uh, correctly, or the jersey has um, some wrong components to it. Um, so there's a lot of detail that goes into these giveaway items to making sure that they're correct, they're of quality, uh, the sponsor is happy, uh, we get the right number of them, um, that the logistics happen, that they arrive on time. Um, thankfully, all my giveaways have arrived uh, before the giveaway date has happened, but um, that has been sometimes a logistical um, challenge. So um, 
with all the eyeballs on us, um, engaging with us, um, we have to make sure our um, I's are dotted and our T's are crossed, that everything goes well. Because if something doesn't go well, then we're going to hear about it. And fans aren't going to be happy. And it's going to blow up. So I have to make sure all those details are correct on the giveaway side, especially. Because um, you hear, when you hear of issues happening with bobbleheads or something, that gets, you know, can get national attention. So thankfully, all of mine have been okay. Uh, and I've gone well, but that's just something to know. The attention to detail is such an important part of my job uh, and making sure it all works. But uh, for me, the best part of my job and why I love it so much is the impact that I get to have on a daily basis, uh, whether it's with a uh, community or the fans. Um, seeing a kid get a bobblehead and have a smile on their face, that's what I live for. That's what I do all the work in the off season to then prep for a game day is seeing fans enjoy the event that I'm doing, the giveaway item that I'm doing, and then they're going to take it home, put it on their shelf, or wear it next time they're going to the grocery store. I'm seeing them enjoy the items that we produce, the events that we do, um, and that's the impact that I get to have on a daily basis, and that's why I love what I do. No, I, I definitely appreciate that because I think sometimes, um, you know, we overlook the little things that make the job worthwhile, and I, and I really right. appreciate you saying that. Um, right. I do have to ask questions about COVID though. So when it comes to COVID and your job description, um, what's gonna change? I mean, what do you envision changing? If we ever do get back to sports, opening them back up again, how's it gonna impact your role? Yeah, that's also a really good question. Um, it's gonna impact it a lot. Um, so right now we're doing a lot of contingency planning. We have for the last couple of months. Um, we're not quite sure when baseball is going to start again, but it will start again. Um, and right for my role, the biggest question is, will there be fans in the stands or not? Um, because that's really dependent on my role. So, um, I mean, I would think when we do start, there will not be fans. Um, we're kind of projecting that at that point, and then eventually we'll slowly let fans back in. But so we've done a lot of contingency planning. We've also postponed uh, a lot of the giveaway items and events to just hold them in 2021 instead. So a lot of my giveaway items are going to get stored um, and then we just hold on to them for a year and give them out next year. Um, same for the events that we do. A lot of them are we're postponing or we're figuring out ways to do them virtually instead. Um, so that's something new I'm working through. I, I didn't have experience doing virtual events, but now we're starting to look at those options to do virtual events down the road uh, since we can't all physically be there in person. Um, but I will say our social media team has been uh, really important and relevant these days. Um, and our social media team is within the marketing department at the Royals. So I work with them every day. But um, that's really the only way for us to engage our fan base right now is through social media. And so they're still turning out content on a daily basis, working with our front office, with our players um, on producing content. Um, so that's another area uh, I would suggest students to look into. Uh, we have probably quadrupled our social media team in the last uh, 10 years, whether now we have digital, um, we have filmers, we have editors, um, videographers. Um, we're really trying to create content now. So that's another area to look at. Um, that's a growing industry. Um, also, our uh, community relations department has done a lot. Um, we have found that uh, food insecurity has been an important part for us. So we've partnered with harvesters. Um, trying to uh, offer free meals to a lot of people. Uh, our hospital partner, uh, we've also recognized and we've had players visit the local hospital, you know, hand out pizza, um, donuts, that sort of thing. Uh, we also have a COVID relief fund set up for all of our kind of not our, our seasonal game day employees like ushers, ticket takers, parking lot attendants to help them. Um, and our players are trying to stay active and involved. So we've done a lot. Um, we're also looking at uh, how sponsors can engage um, now and how we can change activations with sponsors um, to still appease those contracts and for them to, to still engage in our brand. So really every, I mean, it's really been cross, you know, every department we've looked at, how can we do things differently? We almost really have to pivot and figure out how to still do what you do, but do it differently and ways to still engage people uh, when they can't physically all be together. So um, we're adjusting and changing things on the fly. I'm not only using past experience, but kind of throwing everything out the window and trying to figure out how can we do it now? 
and we're all working remotely right now as well. So, you know, communication has been a, a big key, whether it's emails, video calls like that, uh, for us to all be on the same page as, you know, an organization and have one mission and goal moving forward. So we're still really optimistic that we're going to have baseball this year, that there'll be baseball moving forward. Um, but it's been really cool and interesting to see how every department at the Royals has kind of rise to the occasion and put their, you know, gloves on, still made it work. So from us in the marketing standpoint, um, we've created commercials that we've run on television, on radio, um, that kind of thank our fans and uh, show fans that we appreciate um, their engagement and their involvement. But for me, it's figuring out, yep, giveaways, events, um, how to do them differently uh, to make it all work. All right, all right. Matt, thank you. We really appreciate everything today, all the insights, all of the uh, great advice, all of the, the recollections of your time as an NYU Violet. Um, I think overall, you know, really proud of your success at the Tisch Institute, but more importantly, I think the students got a lot of, out of this presentation and, and your interview questions were great. So I really appreciate you and um, thank you. Good, you're welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kelly and uh, go Royals. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for everyone else, thank you out there for joining us for the alumni conversation for SPS Alumni Relations. And uh, we look forward to you joining us for other in our series. And uh, please take care. Thank you. Was there one more slide to show? Yeah. There we go. And of course, if you can stay connected, um, we'd like to really advocate for you all to join the Violet Network. Um, this is a very, very exciting initiative for alumni engagement, and you can also follow us on social media via the different platforms for social media. And so please stay connected with us, and we look forward to you seeing you in the future. Thank you.